But let's get back to the, the football. And uh, as I said, I'm delighted to say Christian Falk is with us. Christian, good morning to you. Hey, good morning to Ireland. Um, you have predicted that Thomas Tuchel would end up at Chelsea for quite a while now. Why, why did you think that he was the perfect fit for them? Or what was your instinct behind that? So uh, I already knew there were contacts uh, just before Lampert and um, he, the club was always interesting for him. You know, uh, it had the perfect um, profile, young players, uh, high quality. So uh, I thought um, there's just one other club which would have been interesting for him. Uh, I know it would have been interesting for me. That would be Barcelona. And he's very close. Uh, there's a connection to Laporta, which is one of the presidents uh, uh, on the election. But the election was changed from January to March, so <laughs> they were out. And so I thought uh, that will happen very, very soon because um, they need a coach like him. And I think uh, he's the right one. So he obviously believes he's, he's uh, the right man for the job. It is a job that doesn't have a very long shelf life. Is that in any way a concern for managers? No, you have to see that um, the profile of Tuchel is also very, very interesting for Chelsea because he worked at, at Dortmund and had problems with sporting director. He was working for PSG where he had problems with Leonardo, also head of sport. And uh, he always uh, liked to take our club uh, in England where uh, the coach, as we call him in Germany, is uh, manager. So he <laughs> has no no sporting director uh, like, like the other ones uh, where he has to fight some transfers or um, decisions about the squad. Uh, it's like, um, you know, he's, he's meeting now Thiago Silva again. You know, Thiago Silva was one part of the clash with Leonardo because uh, Leonardo didn't give him a new contract. Now he, he went to Chelsea and now he has him back again. So you see uh, the many arguments because uh, Chelsea was his choice. That's really interesting. So that, that in a sense, the relationship is actually really good because it was an immediate, oh, the relationship isn't going to be good. But it turns out, Tuchel already knows a good few players in this squad and certainly knows their profile very well. Yes, you know, you have the German players. Um, he tried to get a really good to PSG, also a clash with Leonardo because he didn't pay the fee for the loan. And uh, I think the big difference is um, at PSG, it was uh, very interesting for him to work with Neymar and uh, Mappé. And I think he showed that he can work with superstars. But uh, he prefers um, not such difficult characters, uh, characters like um, the clashing with Cavani and Neymar. Uh, he prefers uh, a club like Chelsea, where you have a lot of quality and a lot of talents, and he can make them to superstars. I think this is his way. He wants uh, education, and uh, uh, this he finds at Chelsea. What will his style of play be? Should we expect his team to play more like the Dortmund team that he was head coach of rather than the PSG team that he was head coach of, or will it be a, a mix? Um, you know, um, he has a, a quiet a kind of style, but he's not uh, like uh, Pep Guardiola. They're very close, they're friends, um, but Pep Guardiola is always on the same system. I think Tuchel can change his system. He has not won, but he's a little bit like Pep Guardiola and he's a little bit like Klopp. I think he's in the middle. And uh, I think this is a good way for Chelsea because he can play ball possession, but he can also play a very, very quick style. And he has to play that uh, because he has a player for that, like Havana, who is very fast, and some others in the team. So um, I think this is a very good point. I think uh, that's why he chose also Chelsea because he... He searched a club which uh, fits to him, uh, but he's not on, on one system. So he basically sees a team without a philosophy and sees that as a positive. Yes, so that's the point. I think uh, uh, Lampert is an icon at, at, at Chelsea, but he has had no so that such experience. I heard from the team that uh, they missed that they gave him uh, the, the tactic. Uh, Lampert was just saying, um, Oh, you have to fight, you have to do the basics. But this team of Chelsea, there are many young players, you know, and uh, they like to have a plan. And I think Tuchel is a manager with a, with a clear plan. He's really good in this. So uh, I think uh, this this is the way they do. And uh, he, so he sees uh, where the players can do the position, you know, and he can change a little bit players. You see, I was very impressed by Neymar, the Champions League uh, tournament in Lisbon when he was playing as a team player the first time I saw him. So I think this is uh, what Tuchel likes. Um, and that's why uh, he was very, because normally he would have preferred to take over a team in summer, 
uh, where he has uh, time to make his training, to go in a camp, but uh, that he did it now, that shows that he was very, very keen on Chelsea. You make it sound, Christian, like he is a bit of a genius. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, is Pep Guardiola a genius? Is, is Klopp a genius? Uh, yes, I would I say yes, know. yes, yeah, the <laughs> And if he's on that level, it's like, wow, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, they're, they're all strange guys. Uh, when you meet Tuchel, uh, he's um, yeah, he's a he's a complicated guy. But uh, I met also Klopp and I met also Guardiola. They are all in a kind of way complicated. You know, uh, this fights uh, Tuchel had with the manager of, of Dortmund and sporting director of PSG is because he's a hundred percent football. You know, he's he, he don't make a compromise. He just goes his way and and this is um i think always a part of genius that you're not easy <laughs> so is that is that maybe a watch out or a potential for this not to work perfectly that it, it will take tuchel a little bit of time to get his character in, in across to the entire club and not just the playing staff but also the hierarchy i don't think so because you know um abramovich choose him also and um Marina is uh, the Iron Lady is very very strict in uh, her decisions, but uh, I don't think he's. Uh, there were you know Leonardo was going uh, in the dressing room and uh, he tried to influence uh, the starting eleven. I think that would never happen at Chelsea, and this is the point. I don't think that that uh, Tuchel uh, don't talk with the board about things. You know at PSG he didn't get the transfers he liked for, for the whole time he was there. So. But um, I think if he can do his job on the pitch and uh, get quite the players he like, uh, he's not saying uh, you have to buy a pay for me, you know. Uh, he's uh, very happy to get uh, young players for his system. And he has it there, you know. Uh, Harvard's a uh, big promise. He knows him from Germany. Uh, he didn't work at the Lampert system. Um, and uh, I think he liked uh, the development of the team. And so I don't <clears throat> think there will be such clashes like in the past and uh, um, that's also a part of Chelsea that uh, that there's nobody who says uh, you have to play like this, like this, uh, but he has to play with the stuff he has, but he likes it. Christian, have you been surprised by the underperformances so far from Timo Werner and, and Kai Havertz? Uh, you know, many colleagues from, from Premier League called me before and I said, um, that this is a, a high price uh, which which Chelsea paid for Harvard's especially and uh, they don't have to forget that he's not a, a complete player now that where Bayern Munich didn't bought him because it was a, a huge uh, amount of money but I uh, said don't forget that he's a big promise so uh, don't think that uh, he costs 80 or 100 million euros and he will work immediately um, you have to wait a little bit and this is uh, of course not so easy if <laughs> a player is so expensive but um, you have to play him, uh, let let him play on his position. And I think this was uh, the problem uh, with Lampard and the team. You know, I also know that Timo Werner uh, spoke to Lampard and said, oh, coach, um, uh, you know, I'm playing on the left side. Um, that's not my position. I need uh, the deepness of, of the pitch to 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 go on my, my speed. And I like to play in the middle. We talked before that I am a nine and a half. Uh, when he played in the middle, Lampard put him on the 11. It's also not his position, you know. Um, if such young players uh, are coming to a team which is not uh, complete already, so the team has also to develop, uh, you have to give them the positions and the structure. And uh, this was missing, but I think uh, Tuchel knows that. Um, he saw it uh, and he knows the players very, very well. Not only the German one, of course, uh, but uh, when you say, talk about Werner or you talk about Harvard, you see that this was a big problem for these young players. So how do you expect him to fix that problem? Is is there a specific formation or a certain style of play that you've seen from Tuchel's career so far that would suggest that he can get Werner and Havertz on the pitch together in a starting team and for it to be a success for Chelsea? Yes, um, I think he has to find his... Uh, I, th I think he has something in his head already. But, uh, you know, um, you have very, very good players which are quite uh, on the same position, uh, uh, like Mason Mount, and you know, the, it's how do you can play with with Harvard's and Mason Mount? It's like a uh, Günther Netzer and Overath in the 70s in Germany. So if you have such such great players, uh, 
you have to find a way that uh, they work together. But I'm, I'm sure that Tuchel find something because this is uh, the thing he loves. Uh, he's thinking 24 hours a day and seven days a week about football. And uh, I think it will work, but it's not like that, that he's coming there and said, I just play like that. And this are my starting 11. Um, he will take a look at it uh, and uh, he don't need new players. I don't, he's not coming there and say, I need this one and this one. He will in, he wants to work with this squad. And so I think he's very confident what he saw. Do you think there will be any transfers in this window for, for Chelsea or it will be somewhere before we see anything? I think it will be some. I heard that um, Tuchel doesn't say something about the transfers. Uh, he's fine with the squad. Um, he knows that we will have some decisions in the future. You know, we, everybody knows that uh, in the defense there are some problems. Uh, the goalkeeper now is new, but uh, he's not, uh, how you say, he's not Manuel Neuer. Um, so you have to, to watch, but uh, he's not coming there and has a completely meaning about everything. Uh, everybody has a chance and uh, we can show that he's he's uh, good enough for Chelsea. And uh, then I think the decisions are in summer. How, how ruthless can he be, Christian? Like, Because just thinking about it, I know we've asked you a couple of questions about the, the two Germans. But does there not have to be a sense of parking that if you're Thomas Tuchel coming into the club? And as you say there, if Mason Mount is ahead of Kai Havertz in the team and it's a one-to-one, -one, he will pick the, the better player. He won't be loyal necessarily to the German players in the squad. He will be loyal to whoever the best player is in that position. Do, do you think he will have the ruthlessness to, to do what is necessary if it's, requ if it's required? You can ask Julian Draxler at PSG. <laughs> I think <laughs> yeah, he would say no. <laughs> Um, so no, there's no German bonus, uh, and uh, <laughs> he will pick the best. And uh, he's, you know, football is, is not a, a game of, of countries; it's international, and the best will play. And um, you know, Kera, Draxler, or Chupomuting, uh, I don't, they, I don't think they had any advantage at PSG. Will he be loyal to the transfer fee? That's the other thing that managers feel a burden to somehow mm -hmm. re-establish or protect the value that the club has invested. Yeah. I think um, this is a big point uh, that was, uh, uh, I think, a little bit the difficulties with, with, with Lampert, who, who said, uh, I need a rise and pay a lot of money for him. And that's not Tuchel. I think if when you saw the time at, at Paris, uh, of course, there were clashes between between Leonardo and him because of transfers. But he never said, uh, please uh, buy this player for me or this player for me. Uh, he said, uh, always just the squad is not, not good enough to win the Champions League. Uh, there's not the com quality. He saw there is a Mappé, there is a Neymar. This is uh, the best you can have. But behind the squad was uh, getting uh, not better the years he were. He lost a lot of good players and didn't get uh, better ones, you know? Yeah. And, uh, and, and at Chelsea, uh, I think, you know, this is a, a club now. Uh, the quality is so high, perhaps on one or two positions. Uh, they have to do something. That's why we are talking about from Akano at the moment. Or uh, I know, don't know how he will decide the goalkeeper position. That's uh, getting very interesting. Um, but uh, at the end, he will be loyal uh, what uh, what the club did before in the transfer market. And if he has one or two wishes in summer, I think this is normal for his job. Is there a quick fix in, in David Alaba floating around? Because there's, there's every fan base in England at the moment, once Alaba to sign for them, uh, you know, what's available and what is not currently at your team is always the best player in the world at a position of need. Is there any chance that Alaba moves in this window, do you think? He will, he will move in summer. Right. He will move in summer and he will take his time. I know that his big dream is Real Madrid and uh, I'm sorry for that, uh, not the Premier League. Uh, now it's a little bit uh, talking about money. Uh, they have clear, clear, uh, clear idea in the head what they want to earn, and also, um, you know, he has an agent, Pinitza Javi, also knows what he wants to earn, and um, it was a little bit like Tuchel uh, when they're looking also to Barcelona because it's another club he prefers, but it's the same like Tuchel <laughs> when you know the election in March. I don't know if they can wait so long, and I heard that uh, they have uh, good talks. Real Madrid. I think it will be Real Madrid at the end, but you know, 
uh, when you hear City is paying three millions more and Chelsea's interest, I don't think it will be Chelsea um, at the end. Uh, I think it will be Real Madrid, but you never know what happens when there is a amount of money in the market. Uh, it's nothing signed yet, but I think there is a quite a handshake uh, to Real. So at the end, I think it will be Real, but it will be a club in summer, not now. One last question for you. Um, Mesut Ozil obviously has, has, his era is finished, uh, Odegaard is joining Arsenal. What did you make of Ozil in England and his time? Will that come to be seen as a success eventually? Will people forget about how it finished or is that one of the great unfulfilled moments in, in German football? Yeah, it's, it's a pity we have to say this. Uh, it's such a great player, you know. Um, I don't know if the Premier League was uh, the right move for him. Uh, we know that uh, it happened because his father was his agent at this time and he had some struggling with Real Madrid. Uh, you know, if Real Madrid uh, and Ronaldo was there say, saying, uh, I miss Mesut Özil, um, you know that he must be a very, very good player. I think that uh, Arsenal and Özil fits also good together about the, the system, uh, how he could play there. But uh, at the end, you know, uh, it was, I think, too much money in this game. And uh, and then you, if you have such a player, you have to let him play. Uh, he's a very, how you call it in English, he has his uh, very strict way. You know, there were also problems in the national team. It's hard. Uh, when you go the way with Israel, you have to be, goes 100 percent and uh, Arsenal at the end didn't like to do that. I can understand in, in parts. I can understand also Usi who is disappointed at the end. Uh, he would have played till the end if he had the chance. So I think um, it's hard for his career because uh, I think he could do some many, many great things and win a few titles more. So at the end, um, he earned a lot of money. So we don't have to have to uh, think, oh, poor message, but I think for the football, it's a pity. Christian, great to have you with us. Thanks so much. Thank you very much. Have Cheers. Time. Christian Falk there giving us uh, some time and insight into the situation with Thomas Tuchel. Uh, loads of comments coming through on this one. Shane says, Tuchel sounds like a great guy, except he's going into a club that are cutthroat. Philosophy aside for Tuchel, he's in the lion's den now. That's interesting, though, the way that Christian Falk was, um, was saying it, it's like it was his choice. So his mm -hmm. reputation as a football manager not in any way diminished by what happened at Paris Saint-Germain and not in any way diminished by the falling out that he had at Borussia Dortmund either. And also, what I found very interesting there is that he's got his sights set on a bigger job down the line. He wants to manage Barcelona, clearly. And he is well entitled to go into the Lions then knowing that the Lion is going to gobble him up at some point in the near future. He'll probably do his two years, get sacked with a little bit of credit in the bank and then maybe become Barcelona manager. That is a win-win for Thomas Tuchel. Do you not think that he automatically turns them into title contenders next season? Well, he has to. It, that absolutely has to be what, ha what, what happens next season. Like, Lampard needed to do that this season with the money he had spent. And if he fails to do that, we will be sitting here next season and Tuchel will not be the manager of Chelsea. He needs to put in a title challenge before Christmas or else he is going to be sacked because that squad is way too talented for them to be anywhere lower than a title challenger. And I expect a manager with his track record to be able to do that. Uh, so do I, absolutely. And the way, the most encouraging thing, and I know you covered this more on yesterday's show, that the most encouraging thing almost is the way he managed to get the best out of Neymar last season or almost bring him back in, in from the cold a little bit or uh, back into to form and kind of play to his ego a little bit more than maybe other managers have done in the past. He knows how to curate a, a superstar, basically, and, and get the very best out of him. And yeah. he's got a lot of superstars in his team. Well, he doesn't, though, yes. He has a lot of players who should be or capable of being superstars or who are paid like superstars, but who haven't actually hit the stratospheric levels. Like... Pulisic, not world-class just yet, but could be. Uh, Kai Havertz, definitely not world-class at the moment. He's not getting anywhere near a World Eleven team. But, you know, in 18 months, maybe. Maybe Timo Werner can be. Maybe Mason Mount can be. Like, there's a lot of maybes around those players. So, I, I think um, it'll be very interesting to see. They're suddenly a very interesting club again. Like, with, with Frank Lampard, it was kind of, oh, that's an interesting experiment. That's not really working out very well. Oof. What's going on there? Whereas with Tuchel, mm. you, you imagine that there will be a very set plan. And the one thing as well is coming in now, right? Uh, one of the papers had it, oh, he's expected to make them challenge for a title immediately. That's not going to happen. But what we have seen yeah. is, at, so Brendan Rodgers had that uh, coming in in the middle of the season 
and things were grand, tricky, and then he actually had a full off season and then had that full first season to um, get them to the point now where it looks like they could be title challengers. Like Chelsea, you've got to accelerate that process a lot quicker. And even Liverpool under Klopp took a while to get to the point where they weren't losing random games midweek or weekends uh, against inferior teams. So I hope he's given 18 months to build the team. Yeah. So, so do I, because he's an infinitely interesting guy. But Chelsea now almost seems like when you're playing football manager and about two seasons into the game, things just start to get really weird. Like if you're playing football manager from 10 years ago, you're like, hold on a minute, Alex Ferguson is manager of Arsenal now. Thiago Silva plays for this team. Where did they get this guy from? And the, the AI just does strange things where you're like, this would never happen in real life. If you were playing football manager 2018 and you saw this happen to Chelsea, you'd be like, ha, football manager has gone crazy. The AI has absolutely lost the plot here. This is it's so you're you're right. It's so exciting. It, it is so novel. And to be honest with you, I really enjoyed watching Chelsea under Lampard because they were always one game away from a little bit of a crisis. And they've just got so much star power in that team that you can't but love watching them play. Ten minutes past nine this morning. One last comment on this. How ironic that Frank lost the dressing room when he as a player was part of a tough playing group that basically played or didn't play relative to each manager they liked. Ah, uh, yeah. Rohan Moore and Thiel, I believe. Uh, yeah, ten minutes past eight this morning here on Wednesday, the 27th of January.